Trace Jackson Davis is coming back to Indiana. Matthew Meyer is coming back to school. He's transferring to Illinois. North Carolina got their top four guys back. Creighton got everybody back and added Baylor Shireman. TCU, low key, might be the biggest winner out of everybody in this coming back carousel. Um, and for the record right now, as we're recording this, Drew Timmy, Trevor Keels, Marcus Sasser, David Roddy, Jules Bernard, Caleb Houston, Musa Diabate, Jalen Wilson, Kevin McCullough. Those guys have not yet made their decisions. That will happen before uh, June 1st deadline. So Justin keep that in Lewis. mind as we're, as we're having this conversation. Oh, yeah. Oh, Justin love, Lewis love that well. kid. I think, I think he's, look, I don't want to tell people what to do, but I think that uh, he is a pro and he probably needs to head on to the NBA and get one of his two way deals and get his $460,000. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, how many of those guys come from Marquette, by the way? Like can all we just those talk big, about that? strong three fours. Tough like, mother. Like, yeah. Tough mother. Yeah. Jimmy Butler's dude. Like, tough mother. It's been a while. It's been a while. That That's a program that that has groomed pros, but I, their fan base right now would say we'll take an NCAA tournament win. <laughs> I mean, they haven't won a tournament game in in 10 years. I think Indiana's. I feel their pain. I feel their pain. Fancy. I know you do. I know I, you I feel do. their pain. T- to me, I was looking at teams today. Like as Mike Woodson heads into his second year, Indiana's a Big Ten title contender. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's talk about that. Trace is back. It's huge. Oh, go and ahead. you have race go ahead. and go you off. have Race Thompson back for a sixth year. And he averaged eleven and eight last year. Trace Jackson Davis is a unicorn of a college talent. He is. When he's on the floor. He just juts out. He runs the floor like a deer. Averaged 18 and 8 this past year. Defensively, he's a presence for his team. He plays so, so hard. And in terms of how you defend him, I think it's really difficult. In fact, I think he's as tough of an assignment in the Big Ten as there is. So for me, when you look at Indiana and you consider the fact they bring in a five-star guard, Jalen hood Shafino. plus Xavier Johnson, who comes back, he averaged over five assists per game this past year. It's not as if you have uh, Hood Shafino coming in and he has to take everything on. No, no, they've got an established point guard that can make things happen for others. And who was the best defensive team, according to Ken Palm in the Big Ten last season? The Indiana Hoosiers. Mike Woodson has a club that could win a Big Ten championship. And look, I don't care how you do it, what way you do it, if he could do that in his second year, That would be silencing a whole hell of a lot of critics that poured on Indiana. There are high expectations in Bloomington. That's good for the health of college basketball. But TJD coming back means that Indiana can win the Big Ten. Yeah, they got that other five-star kid. I'm not going to try to say his name for Montverde. Malik. uh, Renau. 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 Malik Renau. Yeah, Malik Renau. Tamar Bates, former top 25 five-star guy coming back. Should be better. Look, I'll tell you this, T.O., Greg Waddell, who does a lot of our social media stuff, big does the production guy. stuff for Sleepers Media guy, um, big, big 10 guy. He said to me the other day, he thinks Indiana should be a top 10 team with Trace Jackson back. And I was like, dude, what the, what the fuck are you talking I'm about? I'm not mad have at you, it. You been, I'm not have mad you been at drinking? it. And I, like, my, my initial reaction was, Indiana top 10? Are you crazy? And then I went back and I looked. It's not that crazy. It's if they crazy. make shots, if no, Miller Cop is that's, making that's shots, the key. That's and Jalen Hushafino are making shots, if those guys are making <laughs> shots, that's a good team. You're they got to right, make shots, Terrence. and and and, and Miller Cop, he's got to make he's got to make shots this year at a higher rate. And then the, the guy that I really think could be that guy, I, he's he's had a year to get his feet under him there in Bloomington. I, I think Tamar Bates. I'm a fan. Mm-hmm. Big strong body. He's going to have to hit more shots this season. Obviously, he's he struggled from the field this year, but I think that freshman wall hit him pretty hard. Uh, he's got a lot of talent. He's got a smooth stroke. He's somebody who can knock down shots. I think this season. Uh, he could be, you, you know, your freshman to sophomore year, you're going to be able to see one of the biggest jumps in that league because of his talent level and because of Xavier Johnson. Be- Every time you do that, Fanta, I think you're disagreeing with me. So it like throws me off for half a second. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Same thing. When, when like, yeah, like, mm. You hit me, you, you hit me with the Fox, <laughs> with the Fox news face. You hit me with Fox, excuse me, Fox, Fox sports, Fox sports. Let me correct myself. Fox sports <laughs> that's, face. That's, that's the Tucker Carlson. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it, it, like it, but it throws me off for a second. Well, you so know what like you I... made me think? So you, you made me think like <laughs> I I think the Big Ten goes over goes through some roster turnover and we're and we're looking at Michigan right now and whether or not 
Houston Diabate, what their decisions are. As we do this podcast, we haven't heard those decisions. But to me, like, it, we could call it Indiana the front runner because we know what they've got. Mm-hmm. And frankly, I don't think it's been a great off season for the Big Ten thus far. Michigan State really has not done much, in my Illinois opinion. Had a, Illinois has done well. Illinois has done well, but they had major losses. They've done well. They're one of the winners. To me, one of the biggest questions is, what version of Matthew Mayer is Illinois getting? That, well, that's the thing. It's like there's hey before before a, before we get to Illinois before before we do that. Can we just say that it, it, I think Indiana's certainly a top three team in the Big Ten. Certainly, yeah, no, they, the they, they are. They I would I would pick them as favorite. I'd pick them. As I would, the yeah, yeah. I I'd would pick them as favorite. favorite. As of right now, they're the favorites. And not only that, the only people they lost were their most inc- inconsistent pieces: okay, Christian Lander, right. Rob Fennessy, Parker Stewart, Michael Durr. They were they were the most inconsistent dudes they had on the team. All four of those guys are gone, and now you're bringing in from some five star kids on the tail end of it. You get Tamar Bates, who's really really good in my opinion. It's just it's taking him a while. I, I think they could very very well win the Big Ten. They're can can we talk? We don't know what's going on in other else yeah. the league. Yeah, but can we talk about Tamar Bates for a second? My man wears number 53. I'm with him. Oh, that's awesome. He wears number 53. Like, on the one hand, like, what are you doing? But on the other hand, I kind of love it, right? Like, he's going completely off script. How do you not love a dude that's – who wears 50 – offensive linemen wear 53. You got to be a certain kind of dude. Long snappers. To wear 53. Long snappers wear 53. Left guard, John Fanta. John Fanta, freshman team, Seton Hall Prep High School. I wore 64 and I went to St. Ignatius High School in Cleveland. St. Ignatius. I, I, and I, I was a, a terrible left guard. Hey, first first of all, powerhouse, powerhouse. Powerhouse. Oh, powerhouse. Yeah. And the coach told me after my second season, you're not made out for this football thing. Why don't you head up to the broadcast booth? There's some pizza up there. <laughs> Let me tell <laughs> he you didn't something. say that. No, you know what he heard? He heard uh, those Terrence. Pipes. Terrence, that's exactly what he said. And it was the best advice <laughs> I ever got. No, <laughs> that's all. That's great. That's such a good story. Yeah. I went home to my mom. I told her that he had told me to stop playing. And I think she wanted to go down to the school and give her give him a piece of her mind and said, Mom, he's right. I stink. <laughs> that said, 53 is great. 53, he Bates just became my favorite player. Yeah. yeah. Who I, wears love 53? I love it. I love it. No one does. Tamar Bates does. That's it. He's the only guy. He's the only guy. I, I do want to have with this We need to have this conversation about Illinois because it's they are. I don't know if there's a team that has a higher ceiling that also has a floor that could be like that, that team might win three games next year, man. Because if you look at it, right, Sky Clark, Terrence Shannon, Matthew Meyer, Coleman Hawkins, that those four guys right there, if all of them are the best version of themselves, like all four of them could end up being NBA players, right? I don't think that that's something that's crazy to say. They also, they also are four guys that are just good enough to be the best player on teams that can't win any games. And that, that it's so I, I good enough. To, my, my dad used to say this all the time. He used to say good enough to get you beat. Yes. That's 100% <laughs> what they are. So i if you have any idea what to expect from this, this, uh, this Illinois team, go ahead, please, please enlighten me. Cause I have no idea. No, nah, I, I, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy, but there's so much offensive versatility with that group now. Like if you look at it, like Sky Clark has to be really good. Uh, what's the kid? Jaden Epps is a good player too. They, they, everybody, all the Illinois faithful are like, ah, you're overlooking him. I'm like, I'm not sure I'm overlooking him because I think he's a good player. But Sky Sky Clark could be a difference maker his first year in the Big Ten. And there's not many that are in the Big Ten. So it, there's a lot of offensive versatility. Terrence Shannon's a good player, uh, a good, really good college player. It's just. How are you going to make all these pieces fit? And then one guy that, guys, I really liked, and, and Rob, me and you watched him play at the Peach Jam last year, Ty Rogers is a beast. Yes. He is a beast. I thought for sure he had the makings of looking like a Michigan State player just because he is just so strong physically and everything like that. He is a really, really good player. And a guy that played at Baylor, uh, another Baylor guy, Dane Danger. Mm-hmm. Uh, he started center. Maybe he was a nice, he was a really nice high school player that, uh, he's from the state of Minnesota, I believe. Yes, and he then, is. He's from the and, state of Minnesota. And, and he has really long arms. He's got some good skill. He reminds me a little bit of a guy named Eli Thomas that played at Clemson a few years ago. Kind of the same build, big boy. same mold motor, big guys. Yeah. The problem is they don't have an alpha. <sighs> 
it's it's hard to know that though. It's hard. It's hard to know that though, Phantom. It's hard to okay. know that right now. Well, because when I so look at them, pieces. I think Terrence yeah, yeah. Shannon, when I look at Terrence right Shannon now. thinks he's an alpha. And that's like if Terrence Shannon can he th- Terrence Shannon thinks he is the alpha. Here's like, he the thought problem he was the alpha with Terrence Shannon. Thinking, hey, if when you're the alpha, you can't just be the alpha half the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like and, like you if you're if you're the alpha of a team, you can't part time alpha. You turn into beta real quick in everybody else's eyes, and then you're still then you have a conflict, and then like you can't be part time alpha. Go go full time alpha. Ask Fanta. He's he's yeah. newly married. <laughs> You can't yeah. be part-time alpha. You got to bring your game every night, whether it's to the court or the bedroom. Like you got to be a full-time alpha. <laughs> you know, you, you can't, you have to embrace your, you have to embrace the role. My point is you're right. And this is why projections are only projections, but you can't sit here and say that Illinois is the best team in the big 10 when they don't have the best player of Illinois or Indiana, Indiana does. Illinois, to me, is a quality team, but Terrence Shannon Jr. is part-time alpha. Matthew Mayer, his shooting percentage dropped over 8% from 2020-21 to 21-22. I'm so curious. I don't know what what to expect from Matthew Mayer, and the fact is Kofi Coburn walks through that door, and you're going to miss him in so many ways because if for nothing else, he gravitated so much attention. So look, there's going to be a lot on Sky Clark and Clark and Shannon, and if they can coexist to make each other better, then they will be a pretty good basketball team. But we don't know how that's going to pan out. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of questions there. There's also a lot of potential there. So that's that, that might be the see, one. You, have, you could also see Underwood going back to his spread offense where you can pull a five. Away. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. So like now, like now you can see his coaching ability now that he's got a more versatile group. Coleman Hawkins, I called this before last season. He was wildly inconsistent last year, but man, you can see the potential, can't you, Rob? Yeah, one hundred percent. The the guy that does our um, Illinois podcast, Deion Thomas, who's the all time leading scorer um, at Illinois, a, a legend at that program, has been talking about him for like two years, just hyping this dude up. And and it, when I'm not going to say if. Wayne Coleman Hawkins puts it all together. He's going to end up being a beast, but that that's, I mean, that's the same thing with Matthew Meyer. That's the same thing with Terry. That's my thing about Illinois. There's going to be games where they blow people out by 30. And you're like, Holy shit. This team's winning the national title. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be games where they lose by 30. You're like, Holy, well, that's just it. This team is worse than Northwestern. (laughs) Walking into this upcoming season, walking into this upcoming season may not be the worst thing in the world for this league, but let's face it. The big 10 is not going to have the expectations that they've had the last two years. The Big Ten doesn't have a top 10 team in the country entering the 2022-23 season. They don't. They don't have a top 10 team in the country. Mm -hmm. I think, And I think Indiana, Michigan, and Purdue in one way or another, I think that those are probably the three teams that are best in the league heading into next year. I just feel like Indiana, he's going to have them guarding. He's going to have him guarding, and then you're going to see his versatility and his play calling that you it's, saw in I mean, years come, prior to, me, to Kofi. To, to me, it comes down to for for Indiana, it comes down to Xavier Johnson. Um, what is mm-hmm. he going to end up being mm-hmm. for Illinois? It's going to come down to whether or not there is a consistency, b some kind of an alpha, and c like does that team actually come together? And then for Michigan, like. I don't think we're talking enough about Michigan. If they get Diabate oh. and Caleb Houston back, which by the way, like we're not, we, we don't know as of this recording, whether or not they're coming back. Like that team, Hunter Dickinson with Diabate back, Caleb Houston making shots and they're bringing in the kid from Princeton. Um, uh, Jalen. Uh, Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Yeah. yeah Jalen thanks Llewellyn. for bringing that one up. That, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, hey, bad. for all that went wrong for that team, for all that went wrong for, for that team, look what they did in the NCAA tournament. Exactly. 